Hello everyone. I just got back from a paddling trip in Quebec and I know I feel bad I didn't take you guys along except for one meal review I did. So I'm going to go for an overnight this weekend and you guys are welcome to come along. So welcome to my not so wild vlog number nine part one. Okay, the reason we didn't take you along, it's um, a new thing for us, this paddling in kayaks. And we've done day trips and overnight trips just to make sure that we could get all the gear we need into these kayaks for an overnight camp. But this year was the first time we did a multi-day trip with kayaks. And so we wanted to, you know, get our sea legs, so to speak, before we bring you along. So maybe next year when we do it again, we'll bring you along. But this should be a good trip. If there's one thing I've learned from hiking is that you need sunscreen, some kind of sun protection if you're gonna be out all day in the sun. So I knew I was definitely going to need it while paddling because we were going to be out on the water for two to five hours a day. No shade whatsoever. So, of course, I remembered to put sunscreen on my legs and my arms, tops of my ears, my nose. But I don't like the taste of sunscreen, so I didn't put any on my lips. Man, was that ever a huge mistake. I've peeled and peeled and they've cracked. Ah, and it's very, very painful. So learn from my mistakes, kids. Remember to put sunscreen on your lips. Now I've paddled into this little cove here. I'm trying to find an entrance to where you can portage. I'm not gonna take the portage today, I'm gonna to go around, but I wanna find it because 20 plus years ago, before this was a campgrounds area, before the ministry and the local township took over all of the Crown Land campsites, it was just Crown Land. And we were hiking through here trying to get back to where I started and we just we ran out of time and we had to make a campsite in here and I believe it's where this portage is so I'm trying to find it again just to revisit it just to see what it looks like well so far I've managed to find two gorilla campsites they were probably campsites that were made years and years ago and they were taken out of commission when this campgrounds was created. So you're not supposed to be camping there, but it's very obvious that people have been still using those sites. But I still haven't found the portage trail yet. So we're going to try in here. Well, if this is it, it certainly isn't being used as much as it was back in the day. I don't see any way to get in here easily, anyway. Maybe the water level's just really high. Now, I know that they made a campsite out of the other end of this portage, so maybe that's what's put it out of commission. Because in order to use it, you'd have to walk through somebody's rented campsite on the other side. Phew. And if there wasn't somebody at that campsite, and I know there is, I would just take it through there and visit it from the other side. But uh, no go. So I got to get on my way. Because I still got a few hours of paddling to get to where I want to go. So, let's depart.
figure we are headed somewhere right over there be able to see when we get closer this is the last campsite I could rent on this lake today in other words they're all booked now and so if this was the last one you know it's not the best one but we'll make do. I am seeing now why the bottom lip got burned. Look at that. Not quite getting the coverage. Hmm. Now on the Econo Challenge trip this year, we paddled 78 kilometers over six days. And the second big thing I learned is that if you're going to do those kind of kilometers in a kayak, you need a really good seat. And this kayak doesn't come with a seat. Now I thought using my soft spot that I made would be enough padding to put down there. I thought I was being kind of smart, dual purpose item but it was not good enough. So now I've bought a commercial hunter camp seat and I'm almost near the end of this paddle today and it is not doing the job either. So I think when I upgrade, because I'm really liking this kayak thing, I'm really gonna make sure it comes with a very comfortable seat. This does not look like it's a campsite. Strike one. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I see evidence of a campsite. I think this is it. Yeah, this is definitely it. Number six. Okay, welcome to campsite number six of the North Frontenac Parklands Round Schooner Lake. Here's some of the facilities that you get for a little over $25 a night. Definitely a user-built makeshift table. That would be the campfire pit, complete with food scraps, tin foil, cigarette butts, and other assorted garbage. And a very simple toilet. We call these thunder boxes. Just a hole in the ground with a box over top of it and a toilet seat. They're a little better than digging your own cat hole, but just a little better. That black stuff was the privacy screen that they added to these vaults to give you a little bit of privacy. Obviously, they're not maintaining that. Now, here's the old thunder box. I guess they just left it out here. I don't understand why they didn't take that away. And it looks like people are still using it, not sure why. 
But there you have it. That's what you get for a little over $25 a night here in the North Frontenac Parklands. Now I'm here because I want to do some hammock camping. But if you are a tent camper, there is not really a good spot for you to set up a tent. It's sloped and bumpy. I can definitely see why this is the last campsite available out here. But that doesn't bother me because I'm going to hammock camp tonight. That's the reason I'm out here today and there'll be more on that in another video. I am looking for a suitable rock which you would think would be fairly easy with all these rocks around here. But it's proving to be harder than I thought. Ah, here we go. Something about that size because now I need to hang my food bag. Get it out of harm's way, first thing. It's not the best job I've ever done, but I'm not really worried about bears, more squirrels and chipmunks. It's a pretty small branch, I've got it hanging on there, but this is a light food bag. Just one night should do the trick. That should work. Okay, next task, water. I use aqua tabs in that water just to make sure that the viruses are all dead. And I hang it in a tree because I found if I try and leave it on the ground, almost every time it tips over. Yeah, fill up the dirty water bag with the dirty water. Connect your Sawyer squeeze water filter, like so. Hang it upside down. And in a, about 30 to 45 minutes, you've got two liters of clean water filtered. Now that's just for my drinking water. The cooking water I just take straight out of the lake and boil. Okay, so that is my new hammock, under quilt, and top quilt combination I made in the winter. I'm trying it out for the first time on an overnight tonight, but I'll deal with all of the details of that in a separate video. So while I was busy farting around putting all that together, two liters of fresh drinking water ready for me. I love that system. The question I have now is, Will I be able to get away without the tarp? Should I trust the weatherman who said no rain? Hmm. Well, I finished the fireplace rebuild, cleaned it up a little bit. Got the back reflector a little higher. Now I'm worried that I'm not going to have enough time to uh, actually collect firewood because it's dinner time <sighs> and I'm going to film a backcountry meal review but we'll carry on hopefully I'll get to use that fireplace hopefully ah, I just finished filming the backcountry meal review and I like doing them for two reasons I love giving back to the community talking about really great meals that you can take on the trail. But I also do it for myself so I can remember which ones I really liked and why. But whenever I do a meal review, hmm, the end of the meal is cold. Well, not cold, but certainly not hot because of all the farting around I do filming.
This was a good one though. I'll be posting this video later on. I think you're going to like it. And I'm still going to have some daylight to cut some wood for my fire tonight. I have to put my legs back on. It's starting to get a wee bit chilly. I'm on the right side of the lake for morning sun, but I'm starting to feel a bit of a chill. There. Hopefully that's enough firewood to entertain me for tonight. Better get it started soon. It's a beautiful calm night. And lucky for me all those clouds disappeared. Maybe the weatherman was right. I certainly think I had enough kindling. That should give me a better coals. What's the saying? A white man builds a big fire and sits far away. A native builds a small fire and sits close. That's a big fire. Don't you love those nights when there's no moon and there's so many stars out that you can't pick out the constellations you can normally see? This is one of those nights. I gotta roast my coffee for the morning. Well, that's it for me tonight, folks. That'll end part one. And I'll see you in the morning when I have the coffee pot on for the start of part two. Good night, everyone. Thank you.